Hey guys, and welcome back to another Jesus Chasing Club message. Well, this month I just wanted to sit down and talk with you guys a little bit about what just took place in our church. So this past weekend we just finished our Purity Conference, and um, if you guys were there, then you know that I got to share my testimony all about um, you know how I've been able to stay pure, and I really just figured what better way to you know kick back into you know doing the videos and you know what better way to start it off than to continue my testimony just a little bit more and give you guys a little bit more details because you know your testimony is always the easiest thing for you to talk about because it's your testimony that's what we should be sharing you know on a day-to-day basis we should be sharing our testimony because testimonies are what reaches people the most. The Bible says that by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So, you know, our testimonies have power. They are so important. They reach people. It's what makes people realize, okay, this can happen to me too. This is real. This is genuine. This isn't fake. This isn't something phony. People can't, you can't make this stuff up, okay? You cannot tell me that, you know, my testimonies, the, dif- the different testimonies that I have, you can't tell me the different testimonies that other people have. You cannot tell me that they are not because of God. There's only one way these things can happen, and that is through Jesus Christ. And, you know, I've heard some powerful testimonies, and that's what really touched my life and changed my life and made me realize, like, yes, being in church, being a Christian, having a relationship with Jesus because of hearing those testimonies, that was what made me realize that ev- all those things were all of the things that I wanted and that I was missing in my life. So, with that being said, let's jump right into my testimony. Okay. Alright. So, um, I guess I can just kind of recap the things that I said at the Purity Conference as well. For those of you who were not able to make it to the Purity Conference this year, um... So, you know, starting out, growing up, and this isn't just my purity testimony, this is also, like, my life testimony, coming to Jesus testimony, because, you know, I've never shared it on here, so I figured now is the time to do so. Okay, so, um, you know, growing up, I didn't go to church. My parents were not religious at all. You know, church was never anything like I never went to church on Sundays I think the only time I ever went to church as a kid was when there was VBS at um, Mill Creek Baptist Church my grandma took us there like every year and then um, during like holidays like maybe on Mother's Day I think we would go there because my nanny always wanted us to all come with her so but outside of that I never went to church I you know, my parents weren't Christians. None of my family was really Christians. You know, my grandparents were, both of my grandparents. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I still didn't really know much about it. I didn't know who God was. I didn't know anything about church. Anyways, so, um, you know, me growing up, I, my parents split up when I was six years old. And I lived with my dad ever since then. But, you know, it's, uh, uh, to be completely open and honest with you, sometimes there were things that were just really hard. Um, you know, I grew up without my mom. I'm a girl. I'm my dad's only kid living with my dad. You know, he's a single dad. And it was just me. And, you know, and I love my mom. And I know my parents will probably watch this. And I just want to put a disclaimer. I love you guys so much. And I do not... I'm not, please do not take anything offensively or anything like that. I'm not trying to bash either one of you in any way possible because I am so grateful for the both of you and I wouldn't be who I am today without the both of you. (laughs) But, um, so I just had to put that in there real quick. I love you guys. But, um, you know, honestly, me and my mom growing up, we didn't really have that much of a relationship. You know, we've never been super, super close because I was always with my dad. And me and my dad have had an amazing, we still have a great relationship, but, you know, we were so, so close back then, and my dad would do everything for me, and, you know, we got through, we made it through, but it's definitely 
hard growing up and as a girl with just your dad. I will just say that up. So I know what it's like if there's any of you out there who are growing up or grew up like that. Okay, so, you know, growing up outside of all of that, throughout like elementary, middle school, and high school, I think I always had friends who were Christians, but I still never really knew anything about it. You know, I never, I might have gone with like a few of them here or there, but I would just like sit there in service and be like, like, this is so boring. I want to be at my house. Like, I mean, it would be like interesting, sure, but I'd be like, man, I'm so hungry. I'm so tired. How much longer is this going to go? I don't know anything that they're talking about. You know, yada, yada, so on and so on. <laughs> so, um, coming into middle school, I think this was when I really started to feel, like, just really insecure. And this was never anything that I, like, really opened up to about. And, you know, I never really, like, shared this with my dad or anything. And I mean, he was my best friend, but I still, I don't know why. I guess I didn't, like, realize that I felt this way then but like I I knew that I did I don't know how to explain it honestly middle school was you know the start of when everybody starts dating and you know they have all the guy friends or whatever and also keep in mind my dad did not want me to date no dating so I was like terrified to even like look at a guy in middle school so I think that has a lot to do with how I've been able to stay pure, too, because I was, like, terrified to upset my dad and disappoint my dad, because I love him, but, like, oh my goodness, like, I would never get in trouble as a kid, I was, I was just a really good kid, okay, and so, like, he would never have to, like, spank me, whoop me, anything, he would literally just have to, like, raise his voice, and I would be, like, terrified, and, but that's just, like, me, because I was a good kid, and I hated disappointing people, I hated seeing somebody upset, so, you know, I always did everything and listened and obeyed or whatever. So, um, like, in middle school, like I said, you know, all my friends would start, like, dating guys or, you know, hanging out with guys, whatever. I remember always thinking, like, what's wrong with me, you know? Um, no guys were ever really interested with me, in, in me. But, you know, I remember the main things thinking, like, like, I would see, like, all the cool guys with, like, all the, you know, popular girls or whatever, and I would always think, like, there's no way I could ever be with somebody like that. But as in, like, I'm not, not a, not, I'm not good enough. Not that, like, not as a bash to them, but, like, as a bash to myself. And thinking, like, oh, I would never have the good guy or, you know, like, watching movies growing up. And, of course, movies are super unrealistic, but you know, watching movies and always seeing, like, all the cute, like, romance movies and just thinking, well, that will never be me. And, you know, I just always dealt with these things for some reason. I don't know why, but just feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm not good enough. And so that was a battle for a while, but of course I never, like, I was still okay. Like, it's not like I was ever, like, depressed or anything like that. It was just, like, internally things that, you know, thoughts that were going through my mind constantly. And I do, like I said, I mentioned this at the beauty conference, I think I dated, like, one boy for, like, two or three weeks in middle school, but that was, like, literally it. <laughs> the only person I've ever, like, officially dated. So, um, we go to high school, and I'm still not a Christian. I, was, I didn't become a Christian until I was a sophomore in high school. Um, so, you know, freshman, freshman year was honestly pretty rough for me. Um, I didn't really have any classes with any of my friends, so I just really, even more, like, I was already pretty quiet in middle school. Like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain, because I was, like, the quiet, smart kid, but I was also, like, an athlete and, like, semi-popular, so, like, I wasn't ever, like, really the nerd or, like, the popular kid, but, like, somewhere in between. Same with high school. But, um... You know, high school, I really kind of kept to myself, became even more, like, introverted, and probably dealt with the most insecurities that year of high school. Um, sophomore year was when I met Joy. This was the year that my life changed. Um, 29th, April of 2019. I think I met Joy in, like, November of 2018. That is so crazy. I've known Joy for, like, almost, no, like, 
Is that four years? Yeah. Okay, listen. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty crazy. Anyways, so I've known Joy for like four years now. I met her in like November 2020, no, 2018. Um, April of 2019 was when she invited me to come to church and I started going to church. Um, I think the first service I ever went to was a Wednesday night to the youth group. And, you know, I went, and I was, like, really nervous in the beginning because I knew that, um, I knew that the church that she went to was, like, mainly Hispanics, and I was like, I'm about to be the only white person there. But, you know, I went, I was, like, super nervous, super scared because, again, keep in mind, I didn't know anything about church, anything about religion, anything about God. I mean, I say this all the time, but, like, I thought that God and Jesus was the same person. Like, I didn't know anything, okay? And, but I go... And there's, like, 40 kids in the youth group, and they all are, like, a, one big, like, family and friends and, like, you know, and I just felt very, very welcomed when I started coming. And that was what I really liked. And I think in the beginning, like, the people and how welcome I felt was really what kept me going because they made me feel a part. They made me feel like I was a part of the family. You know, they started inviting me to stuff right away. They were super involved, you know, like, in sports and all of that kind of stuff. So, I mean, of course, like, of course I'm going to be attracted and drawn to that because I felt, like, lonely, kind of, and, like, I'm missing something. So, I start going to the church, like, all the time, and then I do remember there was one service on a Wednesday night. I think it was, like, one of the first ones I went to, um, Don Randolph and Jaden Randolph were actually there, and I remember Don was preaching, and it was like, we had split up, like, like, shoot, they were just talking to, like, the girls, and the boys, like, left and went away somewhere or whatever, but I remember after, um, you know, they had, they did, like, an altar call for the people who felt, like, unworthy or, you know, dealing with insecurity issues, and I remember, like, all of the girls went up, and we were all, like, bawling our eyes out. That is so funny to think back and look on, but, oh, boy, that was a rough time for us, I guess, but um, I remember that Chelsea Jones, I think she was, I think they were still a youth leader at the time, but she came up and prayed for me, and she's like, you know, I don't know who you are, because I was new, and she's like, but I just want you to know God loves you, and I love you, and she was like, and you're beautiful, and, you know, just kept telling me all these, you know, all these things that the Bible had to say about me, and all these things to tell me that I am enough, I am worthy, and I remember that night, you know, it, that really changed for me, one, and then also another night that really changed, like, opened my eyes for me, and made me feel like, wow, I think, I think the very first one was, um, the worship team was singing, at the beginning, and Hannah Edwards was sharing her testimony, and that just really made me, like, whoa, because that, I don't, I don't want to, like, talk about her business or anything, but that was a very powerful testimony, and I just remember thinking, like, wow, these people are real, like, like, this is serious, and, I mean, it was a very raw and genuine testimony, and I was like, wow, God really is real. God really does move. He really does work. And I just remember thinking, like, God can do that for me, too. And so, you know, I just very quickly realized this is where I want to be. This is, um, you know, where I feel the most myself, the most apart the most loved, the most welcomed, so that's where I started going, and I mean, it's really been history since then, but, um, you know, at, at the beginning, I was talking about how important it is for you to share your testimony, and that's why I said, because, you know, hearing people's testimonies is what changed my life, it's what really made me realize, like, okay, I'm gonna stay here, I like being here, so don't be scared or timid to share your testimony, your words, have power and your story has a lot of power um so yes so I you know I start going to the youth group 
whatever. I just keep going, keep learning because, you know, I don't know anything. So I'm trying to, you know, taking notes all that I can, learning all that I can, starting to read the Bible, um, starting to pray. And um, let's see, that was the end of my sophomore year. My junior year, February of my junior year. So February of, no, January of 2020. Remember that night, we also did, um, they had an altar call for those who weren't filled with the Holy Ghost. So uh, I went up, was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mr. Felix prayed with me and... um, Yeah, I remember that that was, like, crazy because I had just felt, like, such a draw to go. And I just remember how powerful that moment was. And it was just, it was just a moment in the Holy Ghost, you know. And so then going to February 2nd, 2020, so a month later, that was when we had our baptism service and I was baptized. And, wow, that was just such a true encounter for me. That night was crazy. Um... Before I was baptized, Pastor Terry, you know, kind of spoke a word over me, and so did Pastor Marty and Pastor Jimmy um, baptized me, but, um, you know, and I was still, like, pretty new to the church. I mean, I had been there for, like, almost a year, but they still didn't really know who I was, but they, I remember Pastor, Pastor Marty and Pastor Terry saying, you know, like, I don't know who you are but I know who you are spiritually, and, you know, they prayed over me, spoke over me, Pastor Jimmy, you know, they baptized me, and I remember, you know, when I came up out of the waters, I was, like, like, bawling my eyes out. I tend to cry a lot, and, you know, so, yeah, I was bawling my eyes out, but I remember them saying for Miss Stacy to pray over me, so she came and laid hands on me, and that was probably, like, one of the first, like, really true encounters that I can remember. And, I mean, it was just such a powerful moment, you know? Like, it's a moment I can never forget. And I just remember feeling so peaceful, just, you know, sitting there in the waters and just, just, I don't even know how to explain it. Just, there was, it was just such a peace, you know? I felt Like, all those things that I had been feeling were just gone. You know, I felt freedom from all of that. And I felt like God's hand was on me. And so, you know, I get up out of the waters, go downstairs, change, whatever. And then someone comes downstairs and is like, hey, Chris Walker is looking for you. Or, sorry, hey, Chris Wood is looking for you. And I'm like who's Chris Wood, (laughs) but um, I go upstairs, and he gets me, and he's like, come here, so, you know, I go up, and he just said that, um, like, Pastor Terry wanted to talk with me or something, so, you know, Pastor Terry talks with me, and um, I don't even remember everything that he said that, like, said to me, but I just remember him saying um, to walk with, like, to walk with him and to help him pray for people, so he did an altar call. I don't. I have no idea what the altar call was for. I don't remember. Maybe the fire of God. I don't know. But he just goes and he has me like walk with him. So you know he has me lay hands on people and pray with them. And um, I remember that time was also super powerful. And I don't even like know what I was thinking in the moment. Like I like I like, I remember it, but I, like, can't remember it vividly, vividly, and I think it was probably just because it's the Holy Ghost, you know, but, um, so, you know, we're praying for people, and I remember feeling, like, wow, like, I know that I'm supposed to do this, and sitting here talking, while I'm talking about it right now, I think that's the first time that I've realized, like, I'm supposed to do that, um, but, Thank you, Lord. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, we get done praying for people. I don't remember if he, like, called me, like, up and, like, prayed o- like spoke a word over me and prayed over me before or after I laid hands on people. 
I think it was before. Like, I think he spoke a word, laid hands on me, and then I helped him lay hands on people. I think that's what it was. Anyways, and I remember, I, I've tried finding what he, like, this service and, like, what he spoke over me, but I can't find it anywhere, so I'm kind of sad. But what I remember is that he said, um, he felt like, um, he, he, he saw a lot of, in me that he saw in himself at my age and that he felt like you know I had already taken a big step tonight but that God was calling me up another level so um and I just remember something about you know the acceleration and you know the hand of God and um the will of God and the purpose of God and just that God was calling me up to another level so um, and I definitely, that definitely happened that night, and so, and then I also remember he had Tina Howard pray over me, too, and that was also very powerful. I was also bawling my eyes out again. That's the picture, if you, if you go to our church, that's the picture that's, like, in our church right by the bathrooms. That's that moment right there. Now you know what happened, um, <laughs> But yes, that was such a powerful moment for me. And I remember after everybody was like, Mickey, like that never happens. I just figured like, oh, okay, like this is just normal, whatever. They're like, yeah, no, that never happens. So not saying that I'm like better than or special or anything at all <laughs> more than anybody. But I just, I know that that was like significant or um, you know, like it, it definitely showed that there's a greater call on my life. There's a greater purpose for my life. And, um, ever since then, I think that was the night that really shifted a lot of stuff for me. You know, that was the night that I really, really, really started getting plugged in and pressed in and started serving all the time. And, you know, I got really involved in the youth ministry even more. Um, I got really close with Elijah and Sydney and, you know, started meeting with Sid and started, you know, getting discipled. That was a really great year for me. And then, of course, that's like the COVID year. Like a month later was when COVID happened. And I stayed at the, the Merle's house a lot that summer and hung out on the block. And I definitely learned a lot from all of them. And, you know, it was um, that summer. And even before then, I, I was hanging around Carissa and her mom a lot and you know it was awesome because they were kind of like the spiritual parents that I needed um Carissa's mom and then the Merles of course Elijah and Sydney and so like I learned so much from them and even just you know being around them like you just pick up on little things and you just learn little things and so I I definitely want to stress that and um, get that across to you guys that it is super important to have spiritual parents so you know whoever that is for you definitely you know chase after them and um you know ask them to you know help you or you know to talk to you about certain things or you know just really open up to them and share your heart with them and I know that they will have a lot in return to give to you and to help you through um so yes so I'm super thankful for all of that and um, that next August was my senior year, so now I'm a senior in the youth group, and of course, now I'm, like, one of the leaders, so, um, you know, I really step into, oh, no, wait, pause, um, that summer is when I went to Invasion for the first time, Invasion 2020, and I think, like, that was the best one, seriously, because, because it was, like, the COVID Invasion, there was only 14 of us that went, and I know there's normally, like, 40 or 50 kids from you turn that go, so it was just really, like, the people who went were the ones who, like, really wanted to be there, and who really wanted, like, the, the, just really wanted to spend the week with God, and, you know, to be there for the right reasons, and I don't mean that as, as a bash to, like, anybody else, but I just know that, like, we were all there, and we were, like, so hungry for God, and just so ready to just spend the week with the Lord and to just, you know, sit in his presence and to receive all that we could receive and to just truly be there for that and that alone. 
Um, so, you know, I'll go to Invasion, and I had never seen worship like that before. I mean, I had never seen anything. That was my very first conference I ever went to, and again, here's the word powerful again, but it was so powerful, and I remember, like, I had never been in that deep of worship, and I mean, it was just on another level, seriously, and then I remember the night that Dr. Barclay preached, he um, did an altar call for those who felt like they were called to the fivefold ministry, so I went up, and because I definitely felt, you know, the tug and the pull, and I had really known that since February, and um, so, you know, I went up, and I just felt such a peace. Of course, I'm like, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, all right, just tell me, you know, like, where in the fivefold? Tell me the full plan. Tell me the purpose. Tell me everything, and I'm like, okay, wait, why am I not getting any of that? But, <laughs> you know, I just felt like I knew I was supposed to be there, and um, obviously, God's not going to reveal the whole plan all at that moment. I didn't know that at the time, but, um, you know, I knew that it was right for me to be there, so, um, you know, that just really confirmed for me that I am called to the fivefold, and, um, but, I mean, even whether that is, like, a fivefold gift, like, or full-time ministry, or, you know, whatever that looks like, I still don't know fully what that looks like, I don't know which area, like, I don't know if I'm, like, more of a teacher, more of an evangelist, or, like, what, or if it's, like, you know, like, a a little mix of, like, both, or, like, few, or, like, I don't know, I still don't have all the answers, I still don't know, and it's been two years, so it's okay, I'm still, you know, waiting for God to reveal the plan, the full plan and everything to me, Um, but, you know, I just keep taking the steps every day to get closer and closer to the plan of God, and I know that he's going to reveal it to me, and reveal to me where exactly I fit in the ministry, and reveal all of that to me. As of right now, it's missions, but I'll get to that in a little bit, Um, but yes, so um, after Invasion, I remember talking with Elijah and Sydney after again, and then that's when Elijah had the idea of starting the Mickey Monday videos. So, every Monday, I started recording a video. Um, My first video was, like, 59 seconds, and I remember that it took me, like, three hours to record and probably, like, 200 takes for 59 seconds, (laughs) and, oh my gosh, that's so funny, but, so that, I started that in, like, August of 2020, so, you know, I, I record these weekly videos, and everybody knows me as Mickey Monday, and, um, honestly, I really need to get back into doing that, I truly believe, because, you know, that taught me so much, it wasn't just, um, like, one, it was for me to grow, to push me, to, you know, push me to think of a word every week, to push me to get out of my comfort zone, to push me to learning how to preach or teach to push me to, you know, yeah, all of those things, but it, um, you know, it also really taught me, like, discipline and how to flow, that was definitely something that I learned, um, I think I got to the point at the end where, um, I would just sit and record a video for the first time for, like, and I would just talk for, like, 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, going from 59 seconds, that takes three hours, to just sitting down and talking about what God is doing in my life and what God is speaking to me with, speaking to me on for that week, and, you know, sitting down and talking for, like, 10 minutes in the first take. Like, (laughs) that was just such a learning. And for those of you who watch those videos, praise God, because... Um, I know that there was probably so many that were, like, so rough, and I don't, I feel like I should, like, go back, I need to go back and watch those, like, that would be so funny, I should go back, I should do that as a video, like, reacting to, like, my old videos, oh my gosh, that'd be so funny, I should do that, um, anyways, and now, like, I'm here recording these videos, 
I want to say monthly, but they haven't been monthly, but it's okay. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so I start recording these videos. Um, you know, it really pushes me to, um, you know, have a faith walk every day. Because, you know, if I'm not full, if I don't have anything to talk about, if I'm, if I'm not full myself, if I'm not, you know, full of the word, full of the anointing, if I'm not, you know, seeking God daily, then what am I going to talk about? And, you know, and, um, so I think I did, there was definitely points that I got to where I would just sit down. It would be Monday evening and I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to record a video. And I would just sit and just talk about something random and just something just very, just not good. And, you know, but it was my heart and it was, you know, I not, it was definitely not self-discipline, and, you know, honestly, just being completely honest, that's how it's been these past few months with these videos, and, you know, I hate it, and, you know, I know that I am supposed to be doing these videos to reach people and to help people, but, you know, the moment that we get distracted or the moment that we get our eyes on something else or the moment that we, you know, let the enemy in and, you know, put all these thoughts in our mind, or the moment, just the moment that we're not seeking God daily, the moment that we don't have our eyes solely focused on Him, the moment that we get out of the, ve the vein of God, that's the moment when doing the will of God becomes harder. You know, that's the moment when doing these things start to, you know, decrease. And, you know, we start to get out of doing the things that God has told us to do. So, you know, me personally, I've gotten to the point in my life where, um, you know, things may not be going the way that I planned or the way that I wanted. Or I may not have been as, you know, progressed in my growth with the Lord as I have wanted to. Um, and, you know... I mean, it, it is what it is, you know, it's, it's the choices that affect where I'm at, you know, it's all on me, it's up to me, and, you know, it's just because we don't choose God daily, and I know that we've all been there, we all have those moments, and, you know, it's just something that I think had to happen in order for me to learn from it and to grow from it, and know that there's only a pill from here, I'm never going back, and, you know, I'm just going to keep telling myself those things and keep believing them and keep standing in faith and keep standing strong. And, you know, I know that they're going to, things are going, you know, uh, and I know that as I continue to, you know, realize these things and be honest and open with myself and not, you know, put up a front. And um, I know that as I, you know, step out in faith and do these things, the easier that it'll get. And, Praise God, that's where we're at. So, just go and do what the Lord has told you. That was my last message.